these subdivisions reminds me of a thing I read not long ago that said that turn left onto Arrowhead Drive when they then the destination is on your right build all of these uh, places the only wildlife are on the street signs <laughs> you know it says Hummingbird Lane or Bob Kett or you know Thirty-four. Thirty-four. The destination is on your right. Thirty-four Arrowhead Drive. Arrive. Now this is something that I deal with here. If it's somebody I know or something, I just go set up. But when I go to somebody's house the first time, first time, I, yeah. Uh, Showed up just about two seconds ago. Really? Good. Hadn't caught it yet, but. But, okay, uh, yeah, we're, we're, if I catch it, well, I'll just take a long, longer time to, to process. Now this one, uh, I'm colorblind, so I can't tell you what color he is, but he has a sort of a white neck and breast. Mm -hmm. Whitish looking. That tells me it's a hummingbird. <laughs> <laughs> I got all kinds of strange looking tools. <laughs> Cutting bands and rolling them. You can come over here. Remember we were seeing those yesterday? Oh, those are the bands right there. Yep, that's about 75 hummingbird bands right there. And the band's got a, a letter and five numbers on it. And, and these old guys can't read this number. Right. Right? Me and you can <laughs> read that number. Eight, five, seven, six, three, one. That's right. And that's a number that won't ever be used again. And what that does is it gives this bird a name for the rest of his life. So if this bird's ever caught anywhere else, they will read the number and report it to the National Bird Banding Laboratory, and then you can find out that I banded the bird here today. Now I take that band and run it up this needle, and it gets it wide enough to go around the bird's leg, and then I take that open band and put it in this hole in the end of these pliers. So it's there now. And so then when I put it around its leg, it's just going to close it back to a circle on its leg so it's loose like it's wearing an ankle. And I've already checked both of its legs that's not wearing a band. Can she touch it before you? Oh, absolutely. Bend I'm going to let her feel her heartbeat and I'm going to let her let it go. Okay. But, but we cool. we got to do a bunch of scientific stuff first. All right. And I, I learned many years ago that you do it in the same order every time or you will suddenly look up and you've let the bird go and you didn't band it or you didn't do something you had to do, so. Uh-huh. Okay, I put it around his leg and close it. And that's what the band looks like on his leg. And see, the spinner is just loose on its leg, so it doesn't ever hurt it in any way, but it won't go down over its foot there. Now we'll go ahead and weigh it. And it weighs 3.5 grams. And that's a nice, good winter weight for this bird. That's, a, that's just a little bit more than what a penny weighs. And we'll get some measurements. And it's tail. tell you the measurements, but they wouldn't mean anything to you because they're in metric. Uh -huh. But it's a, absolutely a standard female Rufus Hummingbird. Now we're going to tell how old it is by looking at its bill under magnification. Huh. This is a bird that was hatched this summer. So really? It's a young bird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that by the 
birds are smarter than us. They're they're wrinkled when they, they're built a wrinkle. Uh -huh. and after about six months, then it just looks black and smooth. This is a it's called a hatching year bird. So it was born this year mm -hmm. in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, they rufous hummingbirds breed from about the California Oregon border up through Oregon, Washington, British Columbia, and up in, and up into the inland passage of Alaska. But she's already starting to get a, adult feathers. See these smaller black feathers? Those are new adult feathers. This is about 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So that's P1 through 5. Her secondaries are still whole, and these are immature retroces. So that's just something else we keep. Before I do, hold your hand out. I'm going to just touch it to your finger and let you see what a hummingbird's heartbeat feels like. How do you like that for a heartbeat? And that's just normal heartbeat. It's not because it's afraid or anything. Hold your hand out here, Bob. Well. <laughs> yeah. When they're hovering in front of a flower, their heart rate's as high as 1,200 beats a minute. Wow. So I tell people, think sewing machine rather than... Uh, what we, what we think is it's a heartbeat. Yeah. Now, now I'm going to take a series of pictures of this bird that uh, I'm going to give you. Hey, darling. This is a standard documentation set that I take of every winter bird because you never know when this bird's going to be caught somewhere else. And, People want to know about it. Uh -huh. yeah. Now the thing that tells you this is a, a, a rufous hummingbird, you see on the interior part of its tail, see this reddish brown color? Uh -huh. That's a rufous, plus the orange gorgeous feathers there. Uh -huh. But she's exactly the same size as a, our ruby throats. But the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pink dot on her head, and that just tells me that she's been banded. Uh -huh. So. The, Next week, when you think you have a different bird, I'm going to ask if it's got pink on its head. Right. And this is not permanent. It will stay there uh, for a month or so or something like that. Okay. You can take. You can show these to your friends. Okay. On three. One, two, three. All right. Hold your hand out. I want you to hold your hand perfectly flat. Now, now come on up here a little bit higher with it. Okay. Now, now don't move. This is a trainer hand. You believe that? Watch this. Stay. Man, I'm gonna burn anything like you thought it would be. Uh, I didn't know what it would be like. Started, I banded a, uh, I think it was Alabama's first adult male Allen Summonbird, their house in Dothan. The destination is on your left, 126 Telford Place. Arrived. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down, down there. And I can move anything you need me to? Nope, don't need a thing. Just, you, just, you call your hummingbird. 
Good thing those are cheap reels. <laughs> Zebcos come in handy, huh? It wants that feeder. If he goes in there, I'll catch him and let you get some pictures of him in hand. Yeah, that is really something for him. Beautiful male. Lid on the top of the gate. It was his bolt on him. I started looking at it. Looking at it. Not if you ever want to come back and land another hummingbird. It takes a regular pastor a lot longer to figure out how to get in a trap. That's interesting. You want to get a picture of them? I do, yeah, if you don't mind. All right. They're actually a lot long. Come on. There we go. Keep coming around. That's where you get one. Fantastic. When they really want the feeder, they look straight at it and just go in. First thing I do is check both legs to see if you're wearing a band. Uh-huh. There's a female ruby throat. Alright. We start to band. The first thing is, I know that's a, a female ruby throat hummingbird, so it takes a 5.6 millimeter band. Now the way I'm going to put the band on the bird is I'm going to take that band and run it up this needle, and that opens it wide enough to go around the bird's leg. Then I'm going to take that open band and put it in this hole in the end of these pliers. So, well, you are home. Oh yeah, my wife had shoulder surgery on. How you doing, dude? Doing good, partner. Good to see and you. I can tell you what it is. Yeah. All right. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to turn on my scales here. Although it looks like the cold, my, my scales don't want to work just right, but I'm going to lay the bird on its back and ask it very politely to stick its right leg up here for me. Right now it's holding on to its wing. Let go. Slide the band around. That's a delicate operation. It yes, is. It is. And you want to be very careful doing it. And we're going to weigh it. She weighs 3.3 grams. That's a pretty standard weight in the wintertime. That means she doesn't have any fat, which they don't normally have fat in the wintertime. That's why they keep coming to these feeders. Yeah. They gotta have some energy for the winter. And now I'm gonna look at the build under magnification, and we're gonna see if it's an adult or immature bird from that. Okay, look at that. And I'll also look at the outside tail feather for the shape of that. Yeah, this is a juvenile bird that was hatched this past summer. I measure its wing, then I measure its tail. And its bill. Or the correct scientific term is Coleman. check and see if it's molting at all, but it's not, and I wouldn't expect a juvenile Young, to, yeah. to be uh, molting this time of the year. I tell you what, Dennis, will you, will you step over there? Your your feeder is on the porch. Uh-huh, that's it. Yeah, well, no, will you bring it up? I'll, I'll, I'm going to try to feed her. Cause okay. he... All right, go. 
the standard set of pictures that I take of every winter bird. And it's a head-on shot, and then a side shot, and a back shot. Some will spread their tail for you real easily, and some just won't do it. And she won't, so I'm not going to make her. All right. All for her drink. I don't think she's going to drink. I do a bit for that, and I don't know if it's the same one you just called. That makes her a used bird. <laughs> I was telling the Lou earlier, years ago, before cell phones, I was going on a trip, and when I got back, I had three messages from a lady, and the first one said, I have a hummingbird, it's sick. And I called her and asked her, ma'am, what's the indication your hummingbird's sick? She said, it's so sick it's turning brown. Oh. <laughs> That's a female rufus. Oh, when you see that in the center of the throat like that. Okay. What does the male look the, like The that? male can have that, but he's going to have stippling in it. And if you see any feather that's off to the side, that's never a female. That's a male. We'll run this mag. Put that in my pliers. It was oh, guess more. what? It may be another one. I hate to show you this. Is there a band on that? Oh, good. I mean, I'm glad. I didn't, yeah, I didn't let me, even let me I, see I, that. That's the first yeah. thing I normally do is check both yeah. legs to see if it's got a band on it. But the next thing I want to know is, is it my band? J41376. 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 The first thing I'm going to do is take that band and put it back on here or I will lose that band I was just working with. In the world of high tech now, every hummingbird I've ever banded is on my phone here. Come in Tallahassee. Just before he started banding, I was in his yard in Tallahassee one day and there was a rufous in his yard and it went up to a tree and he said, that bird's looking for a feeder, and I hadn't had a feeder there in five years. Mm -hmm. I caught the bird, and I'd banded it in his yard five years before mm -hmm. that. Now, what you going to do? Just let him go? Well, I'm going to take a whole series of pictures of it for you first. Oh, not, okay. I, yeah, I don't. People always want to remeasure it. Like, they're not like us. They don't get fat when they get old. <laughs> they don't get bald or anything else like that. You can, and they're not like a dog. They don't get quite around the muzzle when they get old. They just look exactly the same. The one thing that Rufus do quite often is that center gorget will get a little bit bigger every year, but not always. So I see that go shine. Yeah, man. I can too. Yeah, if if you, if you get it just right, it's yeah. really really bright. All right, let's get some pictures. Now, wouldn't you want this bird to tell you where it, where it's been? Anywhere from. Uh, like the California, Oregon border up through Oregon, Washington, British Columbia, and all the way up into Alaska. He's likely not to be with you too much longer because while they're here, they do a complete change of feathers, and she is all the way out to her last feather. See that feather right there in a the pen? And you think it's in the lead? It will, when they finish molting, they, yes, yeah, so she may not be, be here a whole lot longer. Oh, yeah. Maybe another one moving. Yeah, I'm just, just hopefully she'll keep coming back. Mm -hmm. My records are female Rufus that came back to a house in uh, Enterprise, Alabama for nine years. You don't worry about that, but some people, oh, I don't have pictures taken of me, but okay, on three, one, two, three. You got what you want, Bobby? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, he's about I train birds and all that kind of stuff. You, you know, told me that before. I know, that's why I'm not going to real Back up just one second, Bobby. There we go. Now come back. I'm fine. Okay, I just wanted to, without a shadow there. Yeah, right. I got what you, I want. You got what you need there, Luke? Yeah, I do. You gonna keep it for a pet? I could. I, I just want to get it taken off, you know. Okay, to... here we go. Get ready. On three. One, two, three. Yo. Yeah.